What's up, Bass Heads? Mr. Bass here today, and I am going to share with you my patented six rod system. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't have a patented six rod system. Uh, but I saw a video years ago by a guy that I like to follow. His handle was Hog Bass on YouTube, and I can't find him now. He's kind of disappeared. But he uh, had a video that I used to watch quite a bit that I liked, and it was his six rod system. And since I couldn't find it, I thought, you know, I'm going to make my own six rod system and just kind of share with you what are the essential six rods that you need to go bass fishing. Now, I need to give you kind of a precursor or a caveat on this because the answer to what are the perfect six rods depends on a million different things. So the, the real uh, answer is that there is no such thing as the perfect six rods. But, there, but you can cover just about every technique you need with six rods. You don't really need any more than that. And I think that's kind of where he was going with this, and I, and I tend to agree. So your six-rod system is going to change depending upon the type of fishing you do and where in the world you fish. So, for example, if you live in upstate New York and you fish the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River and you're chasing big smallies all the time, you're going to have a ton of different rods and reels than I have. You're going to have way more spinning rods and reels than I use. I, I like spinning rods and reels, but the reality is in my six rod system, I've only got one spinning rod. Do I use more than one? Yes, but I'm talking about the six essential rods that you need to be successful to cover basically every technique. Um, but the more you get into bass fishing, you're going to realize I need a rod for this and I need a rod for that. And I need a rod for this. And now, you know, it's impossible for me to just use six rods. I think, ah, oh, I got to have another rod for that technique. But this will give you a basic uh, outline of kind of what I use, what I recommend. And it's by no means the perfect system, but it is not unrealistic to say that you can't cover all your bases with six rods. Now, some guys use a lot less. I got one friend who is a one trick pony. He fishes with a lizard almost all the time. He uses a spinning rod and it works great for him. And wherever he goes, he uses a spinning rod and his lizard and he's happy. So I'm not saying you've got to have more rods if six is more than you would normally use i'm just saying for the serious bass fisherman that's trying to cover all the bases all the techniques where he lives uh you're probably going to need about six rods so let me start with rod number one here and of course i'm not really going to talk about brands i will share with you the brand of rod that i'm showing you just in case you're curious but the, the brand of rod and reel really is way less important than the type of rod and reel. You can get the same rod and reel combos in super cheap setups all the way up to super expensive setups. And I've kind of got a combination here. Most of these would probably be considered high end, but there may be one or two that are, are kind of a little lower. So I'm not recommending uh, specific brands and I'm not recommending you spend a certain amount of money. I'm just kind of showing you what, what I recommend, what I use. So my first rod is a jig and worm rod. And this is a seven foot one fast, heavy rod. And if you're curious, this is a G Loomis and this is the NRX I don't know if it'll show up on there or not. This is the NRX 854C JWR, which stands for Jig and Worm Rod. Now, why do I recommend a jig and worm rod? Basically because worm fishing and jig fishing are two critical essential bass fishing techniques that pretty much 
happen all over the country. And in my part of the world, you absolutely need to be jig fishing certain times of the year and you need to be um, worm fishing. So this rod can do double duty. It can, it can, you can fish all kinds of worms. You can fish, uh, you know, trick worms on it. You can fish big old monster worms uh, out deep. You can, you can fish kind of the, the whole gamut when it comes to worms. You can fish Cinco's with this rod. And uh, right now I've got a Zoom uh, Ultra Vibe Speed Worm, Magnum Speed Worm on there. Um, works great. And then the same with jigs from light jigs all the way up to heavy jigs. This says up to three quarter ounce, but you could probably even go up to an ounce and be fine on this. That covers a lot of different jigs. You can do finesse jig fishing with this thing and you can do really heavy jig fishing. You could also do some punching if you needed to. Uh, we don't have a lot of mats and stuff like that in my part of the world, so I don't do a lot of punching, but you absolutely could do it with this rod. This is a, an overall excellent rod, and I've got it paired with an awesome reel. This is a Shimano, a Shimano Bantam, and uh, the gear ratio on this is a 7 to 1, uh, and I've got 20-pound fluorocarbon on this thing, and really... Uh, the reason I have 20 pound fluorocarbon is because if you're flipping jigs into places, uh, and especially where I fish, we got tons of timber and logs and laydowns. 20 pound test is about as light as I, as I can go. But when I'm, you know, kind of in, in areas where I can get away with it, you can finesse finesse fish, uh, as in like a light finesse jig. It's really not finesse fishing, but it kind of is. That's what they call it anyway. I could go down to maybe 15 pound or 12 pound. Probably wouldn't go any lower than that. This is an all around excellent combo and some sort of a jig and worm rod I think is just critical. Okay, the next rod that I'm gonna talk about is a cranking rod. A rod specifically designed for crankbait fishing and cranking rods are essential because Crankbait fishing is essential, and it, it just is. And so you need a good cranking rod. Now I got two different ones here that I thought I'd show you. This does not show cover the. I mean, there's so many different types out there; it's unbelievable. But I'll kind of show you my current favorite right now. It is a Kistler feeling real rod it's a medium heavy six foot eleven rod and the feel and reel the reason I'm liking this is this part of the rod from from about here to the butt section all the way there that is graphite and then it transitions to a fiberglass tip and I like fiberglass for cranking. Now, there are guys that don't, or a lot of guys that, that fish all graphite. You can get a moderate taper. It, in any case, you need a moderate rod, meaning that the rod bends throughout the entire body of the, of the rod. That's one option. And I have this paired with maybe my favorite reel, uh, if not, it's one of my favorite reels. This reel is a beauty. This is the Shimano Antares. That's how I pronounce it. Uh, this thing, you can fling a super tiny crankbait with this, and it handles it with ease. And it also will handle the heaviest plug you want to throw on it. So... I'm tickled to death with this reel and this uh, feel and reel Kistler combo is just excellent. And again, I'm throwing a square bill right now and I'm in heavy cover. So I'm throwing using 17 pound mono and I prefer mono with my crankbaits, even with a, uh, even with a fiberglass or a, co a combination hybrid rod. I still like mono the best. I know most guys are throwing braid now or even fluorocarbon, 
but for me, I still feel like my hookup ratio is better with mono, and I'm sticking with mono. Here's another great rod that I love, which is a, an all glass rod. And this is by Dobbins. It's their Champion Series all glass. A 705 CBMF glass rod. The main, the main use for it, obviously, is crankbaits. But it also uh, can be used for topwater lures, like um, walking the dog type lures, um, and uh, big poppers, uh, whopper plopper you could throw on this. So anything with, uh, with treble hooks, you could jerk bait fish with this crankbait rod. So this is why I say you can get away with just six rods in your system because a lot of these rods can do double duty or triple duty. Number three, let's go with something big, a heavy hitter. And I got two heavy hitter rods here. <clears throat> and this depends upon where you're at. I already have a jig and worm rod, which I can use for flipping most of the time. Uh, flipping and pitching because I'm not in super heavy, thick grass and mats. But if you were fishing in a place like the Delta or Gunnersville or some of these places that just have massive grass flats and places where you're going to be flipping and pitching and, and really heavy, thick stuff, you need a bigger, heavier rod. I don't need that, but I do use a bigger, heavier rod for frog fishing. Because frogging, I think, is an essential technique, and you need a special rod for frogging. So my my um, first choice is a Dobbins 736C. Uh, this will handle up to a two ounce lure. So this is heavy. I can flip and pitch with this thing. I can frog with it. I can do a lot of different things with it. Um, this is seven foot three inches long, and to me, about seven and a half foot is about as long as you need to go. I do have a bigger flipping setup that's almost eight foot long, and I know a lot of the pros are using eight foot long rods for flipping really big, heavy stuff. I don't really need that most of the time, but this 7.3 works great for flipping and pitching and for frogging. And you can see here right now, I've got a popping frog. That's a Spro popping frog on there. And I've got it paired up with a Revo rocket. And the reason I've got this rocket is because this is a super high speed reel. I think it's nine, yeah, 9.0 to one. And why do you want that when you're flipping or frogging is because when you hit, when you, you need to take up line really quick and so I use a high, high speed reel when I'm frogging and when I'm flipping into heavy, heavy, thick stuff. And uh, that works great. And then I've got a uh, braid on here. I got 65 pound braid and I really like using the braid for frogging. And I like it for flipping too, to tell you the truth. So that's what the combo looks like. You got the rocket and you got this really cool Dobbins rod. So. If you're not a Dobbins fan and you want something a little beefier and heavier, there's plenty of them out there. Now I've got other flipping sticks and you know, a lot of times you'll hear a guy saying, calling it a broomstick. And I got a few broomsticks and I don't like broomsticks. I don't like fishing with broomsticks. I like, I like some, some give in my rods. I like some bend, some spring. And those broomsticks are literally just so rigid that uh, I, I just don't like it. I've never been comfortable with a big, heavy, rigid broomstick. So this is about as broomsticky as I get. It's almost eight foot long at seven foot nine inches. And uh, it, again, will handle up to a two ounce weight. And I got it paired with a 13 fishing concept reel, concept KP. I think this reel's okay. I wouldn't, it's not the best thing out there, but it's okay. I got 50 pound braid on it. So that's another option you may want to consider 
if you're looking for a frog and rod or a big flipping stick. But in any case, um, I think a big frog flipper puncher rod is, is needs to be part of your six rod system for sure, especially in the summertime. All right, next thing I'm going to talk about is a general purpose. And if you could only have one rod, this would be it probably. And that is a medium heavy seven foot long rod roughly. And that's what this is. This is a St. Croix Legend Extreme seven foot medium heavy fast action rod. And I think a medium heavy fast action rod, if you can only have one rod, that's what you should start with. This is incredible, this rod. It's fantastic. I love it. I uh, This is a workhorse. I have just beat this thing to death. It works great for so many different techniques. As you can see, I got a spinner bait on it right now. You could, uh, you can fish so many techniques. You can fish jigs with this. You can fish worms with this. You could fish top waters if you had to. Um, without a doubt, you could fish top waters. You could fish jerk baits. You could fish frogs. You could fish, you could even fish crank baits, even though, uh, in fact, a lot of guys probably do. Um, this would work. This is a versatile all its round rod, and it, it, it's the go to rod, I'd say, if you, if you could only have one rod, as I said before. I've got this paired up with a Shimano Metanium, and um, normally on this, this is a 6.3 to 1. Uh, that's normally what I would have with a medium heavy general purpose rod. I'm going to have about a, a, what I'd call a, a medium speed reel, a little slower, not a seven, but a six, 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 three to one, six, four to one, something like that. It gives you the most versatility. Currently I've got a uh, 15 pound test tied on here. Um, which seems to work fine for my spinner baits. I uh, can also throw chatter baits on it. But this, like I said, and I really believe it, this is the most versatile all around combo you can buy for yourself. A medium heavy rod around seven feet long. It'll do a lot for you. Uh, this is a topwater rod. It's specifically made for topwaters. And I do a lot of topwater fishing. This is a smaller rod. It's six foot eight long. So for me, that's short. I'm, I'm around six foot or a little taller than six foot. And so I like at least a seven foot long rod most of the time. But this little topwater rod for walking the dog, I like a little shorter rod. So that's what this is, a medium uh, action medium uh, tapered fast action rod six foot eight inches long and it's just a really good all-around rod i can I, I, as you can see right now i've got a uh, prop bait on here uh, this is a livingston lures prop bait and works great on here i can fish plugs walk the dog with this i can fish poppers i can fish whopper ploppers not super heavy whopper ploppers, but the smaller ones I can for sure. I could even fish buzz baits with this and have before. Although normally if I'm throwing a buzz bait, I'm going to throw on one of the heavier rods. I can also use this to fish jerk baits. So uh, there are some techniques where I just prefer to have a little shorter rod and I can fish jerk baits in this. So this to me isn't just... Um, for top waters, it's for a number of different things. I could fish small crankbaits with this. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of uh, potential. I've got this paired up with a Daiwa Steez reel, and this is around the seven to one ratio. And currently, I've got 15 pound mono on it. I like mono for my top waters. Again, I just hate braid. It's funny, I love braid for flipping and pitching, and I love it for spinning reels, but I can't stand it on bait casters, not, not if I'm casting. So when I need a floating, when I'm doing a floating lure, I'm going to use mono, and that's what I've got on this. 
pretty nice little setup here. And I think as part of my six rod arsenal, I want one rod, one rod and reel combo that's shorter than, than normal. And finally, the last rod in my six rod system is a spinning spinning setup the fairy wand as some guys like to call it i love i love finesse fishing and i love uh, fishing with a spinning combo and so i go up even though i live in the midwest where we don't have a lot of uh smallies and stuff uh and and my lakes are so full of wood and stuff that it's hard for me to do ned rig fishing and stuff like I've got a Ned Rig tied on right here now. I go north a lot so that I can fish with these combos more. So this is a G Loomis rod. It's another NRX rod which I'm absolutely in love with. This is a six foot ten inch extra fast mag medium and they call this the, uh, the well, their drop shot rod but you can use this rod for shaky heads, for drop shots, for Ned Rigs, for any finesse, te uh, finesse technique you can think of, this bad boy will do it. It is just awesome. I love this thing. And I've got it paired with an awesome Daiwa spinning reel. This thing is the bomb. This is the Exist 3012H, I think is what it is. Yeah, 3012H. Love this combo. I mean, it's just incredible. So if you're, you can also fish Senkos with this. There's so much you can do with this rod. And you know, a lot of the other techniques like cranking, you can crank with the rod, I guess. You can fish with it, jerk, you can jerk bait with the uh, fish jerk baits with this. You can do a lot of things with a spinning rod. So I could easily take a couple of those away and put in a couple of uh, spinning rods in its place um, to, to complete my six rod arsenal. But generally speaking, day in and day out, I would say only one spinning rod. And I'm very, very happy with this rod in particular. So that is it, that's the system. Now what did I leave out? A ton of, a ton of things I left out, but let me show you a couple of specific ones I left out that some guys are going to put some guys are going to put in their system that that I would not do on a, on a daily basis. Here is a beast. This is an iRod Genesis 2 which is made for large swim baits. And there are some dudes that fish tons of large swim baits. This is paired with a Shimano 300E reel and I got 80 pound braid and this this rod works fantastic for big huge heavy swim baits this thing will uh, uh, easily do a four up to a 10 ounce lure 10 ounces and uh, it's almost eight feet long seven feet nine inches and uh Boy, it's fantastic. There are a lot of people who would say this is an essential rod because they do a ton of swim bait fishing. They do Alabama rigs and other rigs that take really big, a big, beefy stick. To me, this is my favorite for that kind of technique, but I wouldn't put it in my six rod system. Some of you might. So that's one I left out. Another one that I did not include in my six rod system, but... Uh, you may think I should, is a swim jig combo. This, this combo right here is actually Bill Lowen's signature swim jig rod from Castaway Rods. It's a heavy rod, and uh, it has a fast tip kind of right up at the, up at the top because to, flip, to, to fish a swim jig, you really want a little bit of spring on the end of your rod. But the reason I didn't include this is the reason I didn't include a ton of rods. Because 
I can fish a swim jig on several of the rods that are already in my six rod system. And this is really what the six rod system is about. You want to have enough rods in your system that you can use multiple techniques on. So I left this out on purpose and I don't think I made a mistake there. Another one though that I think a lot of people would say, hey, you definitely got to have is a combo made for chatterbaits or vibrating jigs. Uh, true, but same thing applies. I can throw that vibrating jig on that jig and worm rod, on the spinnerbait rod, on several of those rods. So that's why I don't include a separate rod made specifically for chatterbait fishing. But this is my chatterbait combo that I throw a lot of times. This is a St. Croix Legend glass rod. It is uh, seven foot four inches long and it's medium heavy. And I love this rod for chatterbait fishing. I think it's great. And I've got it paired with a Daiwa uh, Zillion reel and 20 pound fluorocarbon. And I always throw uh, my chatterbaits on fluorocarbon. But I left this out on purpose and I think it was a good move. So what other rods combos did I leave out of my six rod system? Tons of them, tons and tons and tons of them. If I put all those in, I'd have way more than six rods in my system, right? So I had to pare it down to the six combos that make the most sense for me. I'll just hit on those real quick one more time so that you know. Jig and worm rod, crankbait rod, frogging flipping rod, topwater rod, spinnerbait rod, or if you if you remember my spinnerbait rod was a do-it-all seven foot medium heavy rod, and then the last is that spinning combo, spinning reel. That's my six rods, my six and my six rod system. I think they're awesome. I think they work great. You can duplicate that if you want. If you've got your own six rod system, I'd love to hear what it is. Now here's another good reason why uh, it's, it's good to kind of think about this is because if you ever want to fish tournaments as a co-angler, and I, I like to fish tournaments and I do fish tournaments as a co-angler quite a bit, you're limited to only six rods, seven at the most sometimes. And so if you get good at learning how to fish techniques multiple techniques with just a few rods that will help you as well so i hope you enjoyed this i hope it was helpful as i said i would like to hear what your suggestions are it would be very interesting to me uh, if if you enjoyed this video please subscribe please uh, like and hit that bell for notifications i try to do a video a couple times a week and until next time happy fishing